The bags are back. And the Ravs are pumped. Oh, yeah. Something's definitely wrong. Coming up, we'll sort out all the mess from Sunday's loss to the lowly Rams. We'll meet the guy who ran over the Saints, Ram rookie Jerome Bettis. And we'll go one-on-one -on -one with his college teammate, Saints rookie Irv Smith. Plus, stop looking behind me like you're going to find something. <laughs> Maybe this will cheer you up. The Ricky Jackson Comedy Hour. And you'll get better. St. Sideline is next. This is St. Sideline. Hello, and thanks for joining us, we think, on St. Sideline. I'm Ed Daniels. I'm Alexander Leroy. Fast study. the Saints' season appears to have hit uh, rock bottom. The Rams came into the Dome hurting. They were playing poor football, and they proceeded to run over the Saints with the emphasis on the word run. On the word run and on Jerome Bettis. I guess the two questions, what's wrong? And the uh, second question, can this team make the playoffs? And do you care? They've got three more games to turn it around. The Giants, Eagles, and Bengals are all licking their chops after watching the Saints Sunday. Yes, even the Bengals. Those are the last three opponents for the Saints, who must now beat at least two of them if they hope to reach the playoffs. After Sunday's dismal performance, a 23-20 loss to the lowly Rams. Two hours and 52 minutes of apathy mixed in with some booze. <laughs> And another loss to a bad football team. The Rams rang up 266 yards on the ground. Yeah, Jerome Bettis is some fine rookie, but 212 yards worth? Some embarrassing. The Rams lined up in two tight ends and pitched it to Bettis for 71 yards in a 10-7 first quarter lead. I can't recall, and I've been playing football since I was 13, and I can't recall ever seeing a running back gain 200 yards while I've been on the field. On the first series of the game, James Williams ripped it from Bettis, and Sam Mills ran it in for 30 yards and a touchdown. That and two Morton Anderson field goals gave the Saints a 13-10 halftime lead. But Fred McAfee's second fumble of the game wiped that lead out on the opening kickoff of the second half. went on a 13-play, 80-yard third-quarter drive for a 23-13 lead. The rest of the game was left to wonder if the Saints could come back. And when the answer was no, folks just picked up and went home, quietly. You always look to read a lot of signs around, and they want no signs around or anything like that. So it was kind of it was kind of dead day, you know what I mean? And a lot of people just frustrated because we lose, and I can understand that. A team that lost 38-10 to Phoenix a week ago ran all over the Saints. T.J. Rubley was a winner in his first Superdome start. Now that's downright embarrassing. And so will the thousands of no-shows who just said no and were glad they did. L.A. sports writers haven't seen many performances like this one recently. Neither has Coach Chuck Knox. Here's what they're saying. T.J. Simmers of the Los Angeles Times writes, Chuck Knox, who has kept his emotions to himself through the best of times and now the worst of them, was moved to tears Sunday. The coach's voice shook and in his excitement to praise his players after the Rams had shocked the Saints, the words came with unfettered joy. Knox said, this is very special, very special. In this place, as beat up as we were, it's special. It really, really is. The Rams won by following Knox's formula for success. Run the ball. Make something happen on special teams. Force turnovers on defense. The NFL is taking a page for Major League Baseball. And for the first time, fans are casting votes for the Pro Bowl. With three games to go, the Saints' best hopes are a trio of linebackers. If anyone on the Saints roster deserved the trip to Hawaii, it's linebacker Vaughn Johnson. Number 53 is on a pace to achieve career highs in tackles, sacks, and forced fumbles despite not playing Sunday. Through 13 games last year, Johnson had 66 tackles, one sack, and three forced fumbles, and he made it to the Pro Bowl. By comparison, his numbers this year are much better. 
95 tackles, four sacks, and four forced fumbles. Ricky Jackson's right on his Pro Bowl pace of 1992. Last year at this point, he had 52 tackles, 11 and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, and two recoveries. This year, he's got 13 more tackles, nine and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, and two recoveries. And Ronaldo Turnbull's well ahead of Pat Swilling's Pro Bowl pace. Swilling had 41 tackles, 10 and a half sacks, three forced fumbles, and one recovery. Playing the same spot this year, Turnbull's made 60 tackles, a dozen sacks, five forced fumbles, two recoveries, and an interception. Up next, number 82 at home. We'll go one-on-one -on -one with rookie tight end Irv Smith when Saints sideline continues. The biggest adjustment from college football is the schedule. 16 games spread out over 18 weeks. Rookie tight end Irv Smith is still working on that adjustment. Acclimating from college to the pros has been a smooth transition for the Notre Dame rookie. What's it like being in the NFL right now? What's it like for you? Is, is it what you thought it would be? I remember when I was in school, I always used to think, well, you know, I'm going to school, but, you know, this is my job, football as well. But now, being in the NFL, you realize that it's not really your job until you're getting paid for it, um, where every day um, your job is on the line, you have to go out and perform. What are your hobbies? What do you like to do? Uh, my hobbies are a lot, spending a lot of quiet time by myself. I listen to a lot of music. This is Sardé's section right here. See, I have a Luther section. That's my boy. And we have a Sardé section. That's my girl. I like to cook. I love to eat. I love to... What's your, what's your specialty? My specialty, I would say, um, my mother would tell you I have two specialties. Um, uh, buffalo wings and um, um, shrimp. Um, it's probably uh, shrimp fettuccine. I try to spend a lot of time by myself since I'm around people so much during the day. You know, you're around 50, 60 guys, um, you know, eight, nine hours a day. So when I come home, I try to unwind. Um, I try to read a little bit. I try to um, listen to some music. What do you play before a game? Um, you know, I don't listen to, I used to listen to music. I don't listen to any music before a game any longer. I, just, I try to just um, concentrate on, you know, football. I try to look over my playbook. A lot of guys will put their headphones like that, and I, I just stop doing it. I stop bringing my headphones with me and everything. It's because I just try to keep myself more focused on, you know, what my plays are. I try to stay away from the TV as much as possible because you, your whole day and night can get uh, monopolized by looking at the two. But I do enjoy, you know, watching movies. Um, looking at videos, that kind of thing. But I try to spend a lot of quiet time by myself and um, spend time with some friends. <laughs> Earth is a person that, that enjoys life, a person that um, takes life to the fullest and, and plays, um, plays a kid's sport. And I'm just a, a person that's trying to grow up and enjoy myself. and and, you know, to make a career out of this, not, you know, not a, a lifelong career, but a career as long as um, the Lord enables me to play the sport. The guy throwing the balls to Irv Smith suffered through another disappointing Sunday. With the game on the line and the ball in his hands, Wade Wilson didn't get the job done. Saints quarterback Wade Wilson heard the boos, something he heard before in Minnesota. Wilson was 25 of 43 for 267 yards. He thinks he's still the Saints' starting quarterback. I don't think I played poor today. I don't think that I deserve to be taken out. Uh, you know, certainly people can differ with that opinion, but uh, booze can, if you let it detract from your performance, you can let it, or you can use it for an uh, emotional left lift and do, do, do better. When asked how the hot seat was different in New Orleans than it was in Minnesota, Wilson replied, Usually in Minnesota, you were taken out, you know, back and forth. So if the coach was, you know, quick to give you the quick hook or whatever. But so it was a little more difficult, but it, it made you very thick skinned. Coming up next, Jerry Seinfeld move over. Ricky Jackson takes the world of stand up comedy by storm. And this guy is a superstar waiting to happen. We'll meet the Rams' Jerome Bettis from St. Sideline Continues.
If Sunday's performance is any indication, the Rams' Jerome Bettis has arrived. The 243-pound rookie has Superstar written all over him. Was it great running or poor tackling? What it was for sure was a growing big sign that Jerome Bettis is ready to become one of the premier backs in football. Yeah, I really thought I was going to be playing fullback in the NFL. So, I mean, to come out and, and to change positions to a tailback and then to go for a thousand yards, I think uh, it's just a dream come true. You hand the ball off, carry out your fake, and there it goes. On the 71-yard touchdown run, he wouldn't be caught. No pursuer would gain ground. And in the trenches, Bettis displayed a combination of power and talent that left the proud Saints defense in shreds. You have to look at uh, Bettis and uh, say that he's a, he's, a, he's a damn good running back. And, uh, and he's going to be a, a big back in the league uh, from here on because he's shown that he's, he's faced one of the tougher defenses in the Saints. And uh, he was able to have his way today. They're going to keep running the ball till we stop them. That's all there is to it. As a junior at Notre Dame, Bettis ran over Florida in the Sugar Bowl for 150 yards and three touchdowns. The damage on the Saints was more traumatic. 212 yards later, the Saints were taking on water. The low point of the Mora years was delivered with an exclamation point by Jerome Bettis. Ricky Jackson had a much easier time telling jokes than stuffing Jerome Bettis. A few days before the Rams game, Jackson took to the stage at Morton Anderson's Champions Restaurant for the Ricky Jackson Comedy Hour. It was his first time doing the show, which used to be called the Stan Brock Comedy Hour. Well, I just hope I don't be like Stan. I hope I can uh, hang around again next year. green card like our friend over there. I got a response. <laughs> when Ricky found out he was going to do the comedy hour, he went into intensive training, so he had, he wanted to speak eloquently, he wanted to really, you know, get the point across, across. so who did he call up? Buddy D. Which one is harder, playing football or being a comedian? I think playing football is a little harder. Being a comedian, it's kind of easier because you got fat people like Derek Kennard you can talk about. You got, you got little weasels like Martin Anderson you can talk about. So then you got Tyrone just coming in, you can talk about him. So it's a lot more easy to talk about people than uh, playing football. The comedy, you don't have to take no blows or give no blows, but you know, you, you, you just gotta kind of like just get up there and be yourself. <laughs> but but in, in football, you gotta, you know, you gotta give some, you gotta take some, but you'd rather be on the giving in, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Buford Jordan is up next to tell us if there's still hope for the playoffs. We'll sort through another train wreck and look ahead to the Giants when Saints sideline continues. <laughs> Saints outgained the Rams by 56 yards Sunday, but as they say, stats are for losers, especially when you make three costly turnovers. Two by third-year running back Fred McAfee, who stood up to face the music. Fred McAfee suffered his worst day as a pro. His second fumble on the opening kickoff of the second half was picked up and run in for a touchdown by Darrell Boykin. I've had some bad days, but nothing of this magnitude, you know. Uh, it's just, just one of those things, you know, and you just have to live with it. You know, it's, it's, some, some, it's gonna be hard, for, you know, for some, for me to, you know, just, you know, put like, oh, it didn't happen, but it happened. There's nothing I can do about it. 
McAfee also fumbled in the first quarter at the Ram 31. Los Angeles turned that miscue into a 22-yard field goal by Tony Zendejas. Sunday night after the Rams game, the phone calls to the radio shows in New Orleans were calling for Jim Moore's job. How bad is it? And is there still hope for the playoffs? To answer these and other relevant questions, we go on the bench with Buford Jordan. Uh, Buford, the Rams come to town playing about as poorly as any team in the NFL. Uh, they play the Saints. The Saints they make them look like uh, playoff contenders. Do the, do the Saints really have a shot at the playoffs? They really do, you know, I mean, they, you know, they're seven and six, they still have three games, you know, 10 and six will get them in. The thing is, is that um, even though it, they lost yesterday, the thing was they just turned the ball over and that killed them. Even if they do make the playoffs, this team in the off season needs an evaluation, right? Do you bring a top flight general manager in, a Bill Polian, uh, who was, uh, uh, used to be with the Bills, do you bring a guy like that in and tell him to evaluate it from top to bottom? I think you do, you know, because that um, right now without Jim Finks there, you know, there's some decisions, you know, need to be made that he would normally make, and you do need to bring somebody in like that. Will Tom Benson do that? That's a good question because he was thinking about taking over, so I think the thing is we're going to have to wait till off season and see. Alex? Okay, when you look at it, so the Giants, they have the number one uh, rushing offense in, in the NFL. Can the Saints stop them? I mean, they've had problems with the run. I think they can, you know, but um, the thing is, is they just have to start playing and make it, you know, tackling a lot better because that's, that was the big key yesterday is, um, you know, you saw Jerome Bettis, you know, break tackles in an open field and um, if they want to beat the Giants, they're going to have to tackle a whole lot better. Prediction in this game? Uh you have to go with the Giants, right? Yeah, well, come on. You, can, you, have, you, you know, the odds are going to go with the Giants, but um, the thing is, is if the Saints don't turn the ball over like they have in the past couple of weeks, I think they could win this ball game. What about you, big guy? Well, you know, when you, when you go on a game to game situation, I think they can beat them. Okay. You know, I think they can beat them. My only question is the, run, the running game. Okay, guys. Well, I, I have to go with the Giants, lock, stock, and barrel. But uh, who knows? We'll see how it works out. Promise me you'll be back next week. <laughs> Coming up, we'll check out the playoff picture with three games to go. And the Saints talk about the Giants. They won't make a prediction. That's next on Saints Side Five. DM. After an 0-5 start, Bobby Bear and the Atlanta Falcons continue to make their move on the Saints in the NFC West. The Falcons beat the 49ers 27-24 Saturday to drop San Francisco to 9-4. The Saints could have moved to one game back, but didn't take advantage of that Niner loss. The Saints, after a 5-0 start, are 7-6. Atlanta's slim playoff hopes are still alive at 6-7. And, and the Rams fell a few spots on April's draft board as they moved their record up to 4-9. and nine. With just three games to go, here's how the NFC playoff picture looks. The Niners are the best in the West. The Green Bay Packers are on top in the Central at 8-5. And the New York Giants have the best record in the NFC at 10 and 3. Six other teams are still in the hunt for wild cards. Dallas is the best of the bunch at 9 and 4. The Lions are next at 8 and 5. And yes, the Saints are the final wild card team, a tiebreaker ahead of the Chicago Bears. And the New York Giants are headed into the Dome Monday night. I think the Giants are going to be fired up, and it's up to us, uh, you know, as a team to be fired up for Monday night because the Giants are the best team, I think, to my mind, uh, in the league uh, right now. And uh, they're not going to slack off and stop doing what they're going to do. So it's up to us as a team to, to upgrade our performance and do better. Alex, of course, the Giants won again this week, beating Indianapolis. Early line on this game, picket in some places. The Giants only a one-point favorite in others. That really surprises me. Well, I'll tell you what, though. I went over New York, and the Saints are pretty much back in it, but a loss, and the season is pretty much over. Kickoff time is 8 o'clock Monday night. Saints sideline will air at a special time next week. We'll move to Tuesday night at 6.30. And we've got one more edition of Friday Night Football. Left, check this out. <laughs> Photographer Joseph Leha is still alive. The camera, though, may be DOA. We'll recap all the action from this weekend's state championships and our season finale of Friday Night Football, Friday night at 10.30, right here on WGNO 26. Always good to see a man who's ready to die for the cause. <laughs> yeah, I knew that hurt. He's still alive, though, barely. I'm Ed Daniels. I'm Alexander Laurent. We'll see you next week, next Tuesday night, on St. Sideline. Good night. I don't know if I'll be able to sleep tonight. I, I, if I get to sleep tonight, I know it'll be 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning.
I seem like a lot of people just nonchalant. And I mean, it hurt me real hard, but ain't nothing I can do about it, you know, because every individual is individual. So the only thing I can do is uh, mope about it and try to get over it the best way I can. We're trying to win each week, and that's what we do. We get, we go out there, and, and like we, like always, we try to prepare our team to, to, to play the best they can on Sunday and to win that football game, and that's what we'll continue to try to do. We got our backs against the wall, and we need to fight out of this corner and, and, and get back in it. Uh, we're, we're still in the race, but uh, there is a sense of urgency, without a doubt.